This is a story about my last ayahuasca ceremony. I believe this story is meaningful for a lot of us in many ways, and so that's why I'm called to share with you today. Now jumping right into the first ceremony, about an hour after drinking the first cup, I had not seen anything so far, but I began to feel this discomfort in my belly. It grew from discomfort into painful, and soon there I am writhing in agony, and I'm not receiving any clarity on what's going on. I'm just in a lot of pain. The spirit of Mother Ayahuasca, who is the spirit of the earth, was with us that night and saw that I needed help, sending one of the shaman helpers to come and see me. This was an amazing man, and he brought his magic in full using prayers, blessings, and lotions to help. But when he was done, the pain had not departed. He then told me that he learned he was not strong enough to solve this for me, and I had to pray to God. And so I prayed to God with all my heart. After maybe 10 minutes, God's representative appeared. He was like the harbinger of the supreme creative power, appearing as a mega ultimate super being who I understood to be the sun god, Ra, complete with anime-like super armor. I mean, if there was ever an anime level sun god in existence, this was him. And now suddenly we're in a big Hollywood movie. Gosh, I hope the action scenes are good. The super titan Ra then sends this gigantic chain whip straight into my belly, which latches onto something. And this freaking hulk of a god starts drawing out something incredibly dark and incredibly evil. As a point of credit to the weight of the psychic attack anchor, even with all of his power, it took Ra a long time to pull it out. And so as I'm watching it being pulled from me, the more I begin to understand what is happening. You see, this was not just any ordinary psychic attack anchor created by your average spirit or malevolent wizard, but a particular psychic attack anchor put inside me by the deep state to stop me from becoming an ascended master. And it was a serious piece of work. Angels told me it was one of the most ultimate super weapons known in the astral universe. The way it worked was this. This anchor was entirely invisible and undetectable to me and would supply my mind with exactly the right ingredients for a healthy mindset of self-loathing, feeding me thoughts and actions with the intention of having me completely ruin my own life for me. So anyway, I'm starting to understand this and eventually Ra gets this thing out of my belly and I watch as he hurls it into the surface of the sun. Then he takes this gigantic megaton hammer and begins smashing it over and over and over against the surface of the sun with all of the strength of heaven. And this goes on for some time. If you were to see the whole thing in fast motion, it would probably look like... Seriously, it made Sauron's ring of power seem like that thing was made out of salt in comparison. After about an hour and a half, the anchor cracked and it began to dissolve into the sun. And while I felt better, something was still off. And the next day of ceremony, it was revealed to me that this anchor had a trap built in. If ever it was removed from my body, it would eject a part of itself that was more like a liquid than the solid form of the anchor, a black goo, if you will, and continue to manipulate me from the inside. I spent two days fighting this thing like the Venom symbiote, except this one didn't have a sense of humor. I heard in the wind. And in this battle, I saw where this thing had come from. I had been targeted all the way back in 2012 on a night that I accidentally ate too much of a cannabis edible, which was very concentrated, but that hadn't been disclosed. So I ended up getting very paranoid that night and I passed out in one of those basements that only had concrete and pipes all over the place. It was very freaky. And when I finally woke up, it was two days later. It was in that void space that the anchor was planted. So I'm there in ceremony, evicting venom from my body in every meaning of the phrase, and I'm beginning to get this understanding. Through me, this anchor wreaked havoc on my life. There were times where I published videos that I really shouldn't have. I got myself into partnerships, personally and professionally, that were unhealthy or even dangerous to be a part of and said things about myself that were not true and caused so much damage, leading to a lot of bad energy swirling around me and building up some serious karmic debt. But the biggest help I ever got was going to Rhythmia enough times to be able to release myself from this evil thing once and for all. 
After all four days of ceremony, at last, the last of it was gone. My soul could breathe again, but there were a few more giant messes to clean up. The one inside myself and the one outside myself, which of course reflected each other. You see, all of the self-negative habits and thought patterns were left behind in the same way that if you make an anthill and then evict the ants, the pathways still remain. I still lived with certain habits and ways of thinking about myself until I finally reached a point where my soul transcended and I started actively rewriting all of them more consciously and making significantly better choices. And though part of the reason that led to the making of this video was this, in addition to the internal mess, there has been an external mess left behind from all of this in the collective consciousness fields. In the past few months, I've been facing all of this. I really faced the wrath of God with experiences of serious heaven fire raining down upon me from the fury of the Lord for not representing the light of a higher consciousness on earth as it is in heaven. And even using myself as a visible punching bag in the world giving people ideas about me that were rooted in self-sabotage. But then God was also merciful upon me. He saw what had happened and had mercy on me in the truth that I myself wasn't wicked, but there was evil afoot and now it had been destroyed. And what's more, I wanted to do whatever I could to clean up all of the messes that I've played a part in making. I see now how this psychic attack anchor really got the better of me. And speaking to that for just a moment, I want to be very clear. It's not my intention to play the victim card or obfuscate responsibility in any way. I really know that regardless of what damage was caused through me, I'm responsible to clean it up. A big part of cleaning it up is telling you this story because it's not just my story. And in my heart, I received, you must surely tell this story, lest it only be meaningful to you. In the past many years, I've had a lot of people come and ask me about psychic attacks. And I never knew what to say before. Maybe this story exists so that we can start to take the conversation seriously as a collective, because I didn't really used to. I didn't understand the gravity of it. And now, wow, I mean, I've seen some things, man. And there's an undercurrent to human consciousness that needs both love, healing, and the purifying fires of the supreme divinity. So definitely we'll make more videos about this in the future. But for this moment, I think just sharing this story and holding a space of understanding, healing, and forgiveness with you is where I'm called to begin. I stand for truth, love, and authenticity. And from henceforth, I always will. I love you so much. Thank you for watching.